I'm here because I am a roaring lion crying out righteousness. Earlier this week, Lawrence O'Donnell, a boy from up there in Boston, Massachusetts, uh, you know, I, I think Lawrence O'Donnell probably has something to do that. I was trying to think of the guy's name, Whitey Bulger. Remember that this guy's killed over a thousand people, Whitey Bulger. Finally, he's been killed. They put him in. He was on the run for like 30 years, Whitey Bulger, 20 years. Nobody could find him. He was hiding out. He and his girlfriend. Whitey Bulger, one of the biggest gangsters. I mean, people talk about Al Capone and about Jack's Legs Diamond, but Whitey Bulger in South Boston, uh, one of the biggest gangsters that's ever lived. Boston, Massachusetts. Anyway, Lawrence O'Donnell comes from Boston, and uh, he called Tucker Carlson a liar. You know, sometimes when these people on television and everywhere else, politicians and everybody, they don't, they don't actually use it. They don't flat out to your face, up in your face, call you a liar. You know, they, they beat around the bush and insinuate. Lawrence O'Donnell called Tucker Carlson a liar. He called Sean Hannay a liar to his face. He called Laura Ingram a liar. He called Janine Shapiro a liar. He called Rupert Murdoch, the boy from Down Under, called him a liar. And he didn't do it once. He did it for like 15 minutes. He kept calling them liars on MSNBC. So I figured, well, you know, they're going to be a wall. This is, oh, you got, man, this is, this is like talking to dozens. You know, so I figured Tucker Carlson was going to get him. So last night I watched Tucker Carlson. And here's what Tucker Carlson led with. His lead story last night was this. And so I think I'm, I might as well wait and see what else is going on because I figure Tucker going to defend himself. He's going to defend. That. Plus they said that, you know, he was trying to keep the ratings and money coming in and all. So here's what Tucker, here's, here's what Tucker Carlson did last night. Well, it looks like Don Lamont's long television career is finally over. Mr. Lamont has been sentenced by the High Court of Wokeness to a term in the HR gulag. He'll undergo a procedure called sensitivity training, which is always the first step to being disappeared, or in his case, to doing late night infomercials on BET. Say goodbye to Don Lamont. His colleagues at CNN are adamant they don't want him back ever on moral grounds. So that's it. And we'll admit to feeling some sadness at this news. The prospect of cable without Don Lamont isn't quite as bright as we'd imagined. As the tide There's a whole lot more, so don't run away. There's a whole lot more. Uh, and you might, you might like this little part that, that, that Tucker Carlson does on Don, Don Lemon. He calls him Lamont. Uh, you know, yeah, so I'm going to let you hear, hear most of it. But my, my question is this. Is that, I mean, Barbara Walters, Walter Cronkite, and a bunch of other, uh, you know, Chet Huntley and David Brinkley and all that crowd. You know, you got that Boston, Massachusetts, Lawrence O'Donnell, Whitey Bulger guy. Fighting Tucker Carlson and Rupert Murdoch and Sean Hannity. And rather than Tucker Carlson coming back and throwing mud at, what's his face, Wadi Baj, Mabas, the Massachusetts, Lawrence O'Donnell, he attacks Donald Lemon from CNN. I mean, go, so you got these three men, right? Anyway, go, go ahead, Miss Angel. Let's listen to the rest of this. Dullness and uniformity sweeps over American culture as everything becomes the Apple store. There was a certain joy in watching his unpredictable low IQ zaniness. Let's say you're a conventional news anchor working for a conventional news-based news network and a Malaysian air flight disappeared over the Pacific. You would immediately think hijacking or mechanical failure. Not Don Lamont. Only he had the childlike creativity to imagine the plane had been swallowed by a black hole. In case you've forgotten that legendary moment. What if it was hijacking or terrorism or mechanical failure or pilot error, but what if it was something fully that we don't really understand? A lot of people have been asking about that, about black holes and on and on and on. They're also referencing the Twilight Zone, which has a very similar plot. That's what people are saying. I know it's preposterous, but it, is it preposterous, you think? Is it preposterous? Well, now, hold on, hold on, hold on, I, you know. I, I, I kind of believe in black holes. I mean, I, th I don't think they're immediately within our sphere within a couple of thousand light years, but I know they're out there. I don't know. And, you know, the, a plane appeared. You know what? You know what? I, <laughs> here, this is a postscript or something I wanted to do uh, a, couple of years, a couple of weeks ago when that balloon was floating over America. You ever hear about the Bermuda, the, the Bermuda Triangle? You ever heard about that? It's, it's a place like a, it's like an immediate black hole. 
And a lot of say pilots have gone into it, never returned. A whole squadron of pilots back in the 19-something flew into it. Nobody ever heard of it. Ships have sailed into the black hole. They've never been returned. They've never been recovered. Yeah, you know, it's called a Bermuda Triangle. It's a reality. It really is. It's like a it's like a Bermuda, it's like a black hole off the coast of North Carolina, running up, you know, down the coast of North Carolina, down to Midway, Florida, but to Palm Beach, and then going out at a triangle, you know, out into the to the it, and it, it it's squared off. It has a square, has, actually has a mathematical dimension, uh, the, the Bermuda Triangle. That's why I call it a triangle. So it's like a little black hole. So I'm not defending Don Limon. Limon. I'm, I'm not defending him. Nor am I criticizing Tucker Carlson. What I expected Tucker Carlson to do was go after, after you know, Boston, Massachusetts, Lawrence O'Donnell, and Whitey Bulger. But, okay, I, we'll take what he gave us. Here's what he served up last night. Let's listen to the rest of this if you will, but there was a kind of demented genius on display there and we appreciated it. Now it's over. But the story of Don Lamont is more than about one man's dead career. It is in fact a fascinating tale that illustrates the growing darkness of American liberalism, something that affects all of us. Whatever else he was, Don Lamont was no ideologue. He'd never met a fixed belief. Don Lamont was a careerist. He was a man who rose in television by parroting the instructions of his bosses who received their instructions from the Democratic Party. And in that way, Don Lamont is the perfect measure of how the nation is changing and where it's going. I have to tell you this. Hold, 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 hold it. I have to tell you, Tucker, now you're a pretty powerful person. You're a pretty powerful voice. you got the biggest, largest audience. You know, listen, Alex Jones has got a more powerful audience. I have to tell you that. I don't want to disappoint you in anything. Alex doesn't have a major network behind him, but even now, Alex has got a much, much more powerful and longer standing and more supportive audience than you, Tucker, even though you're number one in cable news media with MSNBC, CBS, and you know Fox News. You're the boy. You're the one. Okay, I'll give you that. And, and, and k- k- kudos and k- congratulations. Having to reach that, because at one time it was you know with Sean Hannity. Uh, well, actually, it was Bill O'Reilly on the same network you're on right now, Tucker, Bill O'Reilly was the man. He was it. And then behind him was Sean Hannity. And then Bill O'Reilly got caught squeezing some, you know, woman, you know, whatever it is he was doing, and they got rid of him. And so then Sean Hannity became number one. And then you've taken some steps, you know, uh, Tucker. That made you number one. Okay, c- congratulations. But I think that for you to criticize Don Lemon for puppeting some stuff, it might be a little bit disingenuous. Anyway, go ahead, Ms. Engineer. During the Obama years, when we were all told the country might finally move past our divisive racial history, Don Lamont reflected the current trend. At one point, he even attempted one of those authentic conversations about race we were always being encouraged to have. Here it is. Black people, if you really want to fix the problem. Hold, 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 hold it. Now, this is the part of, of uh, Don Lemon that I can appreciate. Uh, you, you know, Tucker says he's not an ide- ideologue. But if you, the, the, what Don Lemon is going to say right now is I'm in 100% agreement with it. The problem is, and what Tucker Carlson is going to point out, is that Don Lemon has left this position, because this was back uh, seven, eight years ago, 10 years ago maybe. He's left this position. This, this statement was made in 2013, so we're talking 10 years ago. I would completely agree with Don Lemon on what he's, what he's going to say now, except he doesn't believe it anymore. And if he does believe it, people like Al Sharpton will slap the taste out of his mouth if he got on television and said this now. Al Sharpton will slap the taste out of his mouth, and Obama would have disenfranchised him from the you know, lesbian and gay club. So, but this was some solid stuff coming from Don Lemon. So at one point, it must have been, at one point, Don Lemon must have been a, a genuine person in my eyes back in 2013. Go ahead, Mr. Engineer. Let, let, everybody, listen, listen to this very carefully. If you don't listen to nothing else about Don Lemon, listen to this. Here's just five things that you should think about doing. Here's number five pull up your pants. Some people, a lot of them black, gave me flack for saying that recently on the Wendy Williams show. I hosted a special on the N-word, suggesting that black people stop using it, and that entertainers stop deluding yourselves or themselves and others, that you're somehow taking the word back. Now number three, respect where you live. Start small by not dropping trash, littering in your own communities. Number two, finish school. You want to break the cycle of poverty? Stop telling kids they're acting white because they go to school or they speak proper English. And number one, and probably the most important, just because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should. 
Yeah. And you know what I'm so going to do? Stop. I'm going to ask the engineer to clip this. We're going to run. We're going to start running this as a break clip. Uh, that that just that segment. But I, you know, but I would agree with Don Lemon on the Lamon. I would agree with him on those issues that he just expressed. I think they're important. And he, if he believed this ten years ago, now he can't say that now. If he said that now, they'd run him out of Dodge. Al Sharpton will slap the taste out of his mouth, and you know they'll disenfranchise him from the, you know from the House Negro tribes. Uh, so he's had to change it. But he was speaking truth. I mean, it's actually, and you know, he used to live in Harlem, but I think he got fed up with that. But that's a pretty good clip. That's, I mean, imagine, you know, if we could get that kind of public figures saying this consistently on television to black people. You know, you're running around here having babies like you don't, you know, like, hey, man, what the hell is wrong with you? You know, and then everybody embracing it. You won't pull up your pants, your pants all down, you're showing your underwear, and you, you dirty up your own neighborhood. And anybody who tries to go to school or try to come to the outlaw high school to embedder themselves, you call them to the, acting like they're white. And, and, and then you call past the man. He ain't for the black man. He 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 try to be white, try to teach white principles. And, you know, by the way, you know, here, let me say this, too. Also, I'm going to tell you something. Though I graduated from an all black school in North Carolina, 1965, I lived in North Carolina. Now, listen, this is this is this is all true. Uh, I lived in North Carolina for the first 18 years of my life, right? I went to school there. I went to town. I went, you know, grocery stores. I went to, you know, I, I lived, I dro drove the roads and, you know, got my driver's license. I did all of that. I was never once in the 18 years of my living in North Carolina, which was a plantation, I never got called the N-word by a white person. Not once. Not once. I never got called the N-word by, by a white person. The sheriff, the, the, his name was Hagen and a bunch of other people, you know. And, you know, the doctors, the Dr. Johnson, the dentist, and, you know, Mr. Odom, who owned the supermarkets, and, you know, the person owned the pharmacy and the B.C. Moore store and all, I mean, in and around, all around there and there. And then I went out, I was outside this lunch, little luncheonette, played Tom's Luncheonette where I used to shine shoes, right? And I worked for a man named Huggins who owned the shoe. But nobody, ever, no, none of these white people ever called me the N-word. You know, the first time I got called the N-word by a white person when I came to New York. Go figure. Nobody in North Carolina. So you got to realize, I mean, so when you, you're talking about plantation racism, I have to wait a minute. I've been, the way you said the South was so bad, you know, no one ever called me in the N word. And the other thing is that, so the N word, so here, so Whoopi, Whoopi Goldberg said, well, we can call, we black people, we can call each other the N word, but you white people can't use it. That's sick as hell, you know that? But, but of course, you know, you got some really, really sick people that have been promoted. But I'm amazed, and I would take my hat off if I had my hat on. I'd take my hat off to Don Lemon for this segment of what he said in 2013. I would like to know. You know, Don Lemon, may, even though he's gay, he may be straight. Wait a minute, that don't work. Gay, he may be straight. But even though he's gay, he may be straight in some of his ideologues. Because he said Nikki, Nikki Haley, she ain't in her prime. And he's right. But there's something, you know what I think? I'll tell you what I think, because I figure y'all want to know, and I know, because I tell y'all. You know, it is rumored and pretty much substantial that Nikki Haley has been in bed with more men than some of the beds at Rikers Island. That woman, <laughs> Nikki Haley. And so I don't know if he was talking about her prime being she'd been wore out by all the men she'd been sleeping with. They done wore her out. Okay, all right. So, listen, if you're offended by that, you know, it's a little bit, you know, risky, and I understand a little bit off color and everything else. And so, if you're offended by that, please forgive Pastor Manny. Say, Pastor Manny, we forgive you for telling the truth. But I don't know what Don Lemon was going at, but I, I would like to receive a return of the 2013 Don Lemon. Will the, will the Don Lemon of 2013, uh, back that up, Miss Lynch, can you back that up? Will the Don Lemon of 2013 please return? Because if, if the Don Lemon of 2013 return, I'll have him on the Manning Report. Don't know if he'll come. You know, uh, but now he's got to live among all these liberals, all these woke people, all these critical race. What is that critical? 
<laughs> critical critical race theory. I got the critical race theory. I lived in eighteen. I lived in North Carolina for eighteen years. Worked around white folk every time. I, everywhere I looked was white people. Everywhere. Never, never did they ever call me or anybody I know the N word. Anyway, so Miss Inja, <laughs> this one more time. I want to recall this the Don Lemon of twenty thirteen. Ray, one more time, Ms. Engineer. Here you go. Black people, if you really want to fix the problem, here's just five things that you should think about doing. Here's number five, pull up your pants. Some people, a lot of them black, gave me flack for saying that recently on the Wendy Williams show. I hosted a special on the N-word, suggesting that black people stop using it, and that entertainers stop deluding yourselves or themselves and others that you're somehow taking the word back. Now number three. Respect where you live. Start small by not dropping trash, littering in your own communities. Number two, finish school. You want to break the cycle of poverty? Stop telling kids they're acting white because they go to school or they speak proper English. And number one, and probably the most important, just because you can have a baby, it doesn't mean you should. You know, I think that, how does Don Lemon now, because you got you know, you got the June 19th woman with all that red hair with a phony cell. You know, you got all the critical race theory promoters. You got the woke society promoters. You got all these people. How does he sit there now and listen to them? Because I know, listen, this truth does not change. I don't care how gay you get. You can be gay than Liberace. Listen, this truth that this man Don Lemon is speaking does not change. This is true, you black people, every time you have him, David, don't know who the dad is. Mama don't even know who the dad is. Baby ain't gonna never know. The mama don't know who the dad is. The baby ain't gonna never know who the dad is. Every time you're having babies out of both of your panty legs and then pulling your pants down and not going to school and, and then anybody who tries to get ahead in life with uh, adopting themselves to the Protestant work ethic and to the structural society of people who built great society talk and try to get themselves a good education, you ridicule them. What this man says, it's still in him. It's got to be still in him. It got to be still in him. So, you know, how does he sit down on television with all them freaks? With all that hair colored, all kind of stuff. Got all kind of horse hair in the head, you know, running around there, flinging all that horse like a pony's tail, and and talking about we, you know, we black people, we have got to rediscover our history. We have got to reimagine ourselves. What the hell, Don? I, I, you know, I'm gonna promote this. I'm gonna get to try to get this out. Anyway, so uh, we'll see what else Tucker Carlson had to say, Miss Engineer. Then I got to go. But I, what, the point of it is here. Well, go ahead, Miss Engineer. He didn't say nothing about Lawrence O'Donnell. The awesome master, he didn't say nothing about that guy, Lawrence O'Donnell. That's what I want to say. So stop littering, show respect, go to school, because the rules apply to everybody no matter what they look like. It's impossible to imagine the Don Lamont of today. It's impossible to imagine You're anyone absolutely right, Tucker. I agree speaking with you. Of- well, come on, man. Come on. I can call you homie now. Call my homie. Tucker, Tucker calls my homies because, you know, would you imagine Don Lemon today? That was 2013, right? And it was during the Obama, uh, if you will, siege. 